So d is that something that interests you, the distinction between artifice and, and uh, nature and the way in your kind of painting the, the two sort of reflect each other or emerge? The artifice, I'm, I'm sorry. The well, the, the, um, the paintings that you do are some to some degree deliberately created, but these billboards and walls that you find are not deliberately planned by an artist, right? Right, right. So I guess it's the randomness of it. Um, and also, you know, it's the, the schooled versus the unschooled. I mean, you know, so I, I went to art school. I have a certain education of formalism. These... Um, the other these paintings, I, I you know I don't know that, but I'm assuming that that the people that do graffiti abatement are not um, deliberately creating artwork. Right, right? exactly, right. exactly. But with the artist's eye, you can see a lot there that maybe they didn't see when they were doing the abatement. Right. I guess any job can be done artistically exactly. if you're lucky. All right, and this one now is that's one of my paintings, okay. um, and um, I believe that's 101. Um, the title of it. Yes. Most of my titles are taken from r roots or streets or something having to do with the city, um, an area of the city. Uh, as you can see on that, uh, oh, one thing that I should really point out about my work is that I chosen to use the back sides of posters and not the front sides of posters. A couple deliberate reasons for that. One is to um, sort of turn my back as sort of a, a statement on all the advertisement that, that, that is sort of shown in our face or put it before us. So mm -hmm. in some ways I'm turning my back on that um, constant barrage of advertisement. The other thing is uh, my fascination with things that are not supposed to be seen. I mean, you aren't supposed to look at the back sides of posters and, you know, one is supposed to look at the front side. So there's something about that unintentional, again, um, and undervalued. Um, aspect of it that I find fascinating. And then I think you told me that in a lot of your paintings you put the posters on and then you actually sand them down from the back so that only right. pieces of the text are revealed. So there's something a little bit mysterious about that, don't you think? Or how does how does that strike you? Yeah, it, I mean something gets revealed um, by the sanding and I really never know what is going to be revealed. Now I get a bit of, I get a better sense of what kind of paper it is now and what will, what might be revealed, but I really never know. Um, it, it's a little bit of uh, trial and error and a little bit of uh, randomness. Um, Let's take a look at another one now. So tell us a little bit about how you went about creating this one. Um, so specifically, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but you know, again, it's, it's my process of laying. I usually start with a blank canvas mm -hmm. and gesso it. Then I will take, uh, you know, pieces of paper and I will lay it on top and build up layers. I'll, I'll sand it down. I'll add marks to it. And again, like, you know, similar to, uh, you know, I'm not comparing myself with Dakuti or, or <laughs> Twombly, but you know, I will make marks in that that gestural marks. Um, that's my language. That's what I. That's that's what I. I am compelled to do. Mm -hmm. you know, I feel interested in doing, and then I will react to those marks um, by either covering them up or um, letting them show. Okay, uh, let's take a look at another one here. Um, so the use of color in this one is does that have any particular significance? How did you choose those colors? Um, you know, usually I, what, what I say, riff off what I, what gets revealed underneath. What I really like about the way I work is that sometimes I'll sand and a color palette will appear that is something that I'm not used to, something that's really not in my vocabulary, so I will go with that. And um, maybe in this one probably a green appeared and I really like that color of the green, so I decided that I would, you know, carry that theme throughout the, through some of the painting. The arrangement of colors reminds me in this one a little bit of a map, too, in, in some ways. You think of a, of a tri uh, triptych from um, AAA or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it does have that it green, does have that green kind of quality. All right, and then in this one I think there's actually a little bit of text there that's been sanded? or Yeah, text is, is, that's... Um, shown through and sometimes <laughs> I will get a, a double-sided piece of paper and so I feel that that's fair game that I can use that for <laughs> I'm not cheating <laughs> so the text will come through but it really sort of depends on the t paper and the quality of the paper and what's you know Xeroxes work well too it's yeah all right and then um, taking a look now at this one um, tell us a little bit again about the, the process that how long would a piece like this take you to do it really depends on the piece you know, some pieces sort of disform themselves and happen quite easily. Other pieces that I think I was telling you, you struggle with and you wrestle to the ground and you have to stop and let them rest for a while and, you know, keep working. So I, you know, I imagine it happens over a period of several months. Um, you said to me at one point, I think, um, 
uh, you said sometimes you have to kill your darlings. Um, <laughs> that sounded very passionate. Tell me, tell me a little bit about killing your your darlings, Joan Crawford. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a little bit of an axiom, I guess, in art school. Um, sometimes you become too attached to parts of your painting, um, things that you really like about it, and it keeps you from moving on in the painting. So uh, quite often you'll have to destroy that which you love in order for the piece to progress so you can move on and become something else. Um, so that's... All right. So now this... Um uh, the, there's a mark there in the upper left that's sort of prominent. Is that something that you added, or is yeah, that's that a, that's one of my marks. It's a graphite mark. All right. But it, if, if you see, sort of, it resembles the underneath. There's a very subtle uh, mark underneath in the white. So I, I think I was playing off that uh, sort of line work. And does that mark have any particular significance? Is it a, is it a modified letter or a sign of any kind? Or None whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were you were telling me that when you do these paintings. Very often, you don't really have uh, a, a meaning in mind underneath. I was I was very surprised to hear that. So that you just sort of are working with form and color and not mm -hmm. really trying to uh, transmit a message. Um, how does that feel to you to be um, sort of working without uh, a content in mind or a, um, a message? I, I actually find it very liberating um, because you're not tied to that to that particular meaning. You're not trying to create you know create a meaning out of it. Um, you know, I think I am so enamored and so just awed by elements of form and color and structure that, I, you know, it's enough for me. And I think that's, and, and also for me, it gets closer to uh, a visceral um, mm -hmm. response than, you know, it's something very basic about about um, form and color and composition. So in, in these kinds of paintings which have a connection to abstract expressionism, how free is the viewer to make up their own mind about what's in it? How much does the viewer read into it? Or is there, you know, wh at what point does the viewer meet you aesthetically? Or is it really just an opportunity you offer to the viewer to create their own fantasy about the meaning or their own interpretation of the meaning? I, I would believe it's, it's, the, it's the latter. Um, you know, people, I've had people react, people come to an abstract painting with, um, they react to it quite differently. One person will react to it differently than another. Um, some people need to find a, a meaning in, in your work, um, which is fine, and they will see things and they will ascribe all kinds of meaning. And, and that's not to say that maybe that's something unintentionally you didn't do. I mean, you know, um, or you, you did, but was unconscious. You were unaware of it. Unaware of it, you're correct. Um, so then these paintings are all, in a sense, a jumping off point for people to kind of create their own vision or, or yeah, have their own aesthetic experience without your really anticipating what their reaction will be. I hope so. That's, I hope so. That's very mysterious in its own way. Do you do you feel a sense of mystery about that, or you just turn it over and let it happen however it's going to happen? I would probably turn it over and let it happen however it's going to happen. But, I, you know, I think there's a sense of, again, I, I keep on mentioning freedom, but I, a sense of letting the viewer uh, react to the, the painting how they wish to react to it. Um, there's no preconscribed way or right way to react to the painting. As just with abstract, there's really no right way or wrong way to do an abstract. So there's no really no right way or wrong way to view a painting. Um, so then this one is interesting because it's a much more irregular shape than the other ones. Now, how did this uh, evolve? This is a newer n a newer work um, for me. What I was sort of interested was. As you um, as you showed the graffiti abatement, um, I looked around the city, and there are some wonderful shapes that are made from rollers. Um, very interesting to me. So what I did was I sort of abstracted or reduced that that those, some of those shapes, and I made a canvas or a panel out of it, and I used that as my base for um, my work. Now you said that um, this one seems to me to have a, a very strong sense of energy to it. How, what what kind of energy do you feel in your paintings? Are they um, uh, <clears throat> is it a passionate thing for you, or, or you feel that you're struggling with them, or do they just kind of arrange themselves um, quietly for you? Or 